there aren't many countries in the world where having an abortion can land you in jail. But in the Himalayan kingdom of Nepal, it's considered such a serious threat to the nation's morals that one-fifth of all women prisoners are serving sentences for abortions. And as Zulod Roberts has been finding out, even rape and incest aren't considered mitigating factors. Up until 50 years ago, Nepal was one of the most isolated countries in the world, cut off by its mountains and by the religious conservatism which still prevails. It's a country where a good Hindu wife is expected to don a red sari once a week and thank the gods for her husband. Some women even worship their men, which is ironical in the light of the way they can be treated. Women aren't included when it comes to important religious ceremonies, like delivering the last rites. And yet, when it comes to birth, or all too often, abortion, it's the woman who must bear the consequences alone. The prison quarter in Kathmandu. A fifth of all women prisoners in Nepal are being held simply because they've had abortions. Some of these women are victims of incest or rape, serving sentences of up to 20 years. Their abusers get away with much shorter prison terms or even just a fine. Indira, a prison visitor, pays her weekly call on 16-year-old Min Min Nama, who served two years in jail so far. She says it was her step-sister-in-law who caused the abortion to protect her brother, the rapist. Mimi Nama says that her sister-in-law then put the dead fetus in the toilet when it was discovered, she was arrested, charged with infanticide, and sentenced to 12 years in jail. In rural Nepal, there's no one around to champion a woman's rights. She's little more than a beast of burden. Before she's married, a girl is the possession of her father, who will often marry her off to serve the family's interests. Once wed, she belongs to her husband and will spend the rest of her life as subservient wife, mother, and unpaid laborer. Nepal is the only country in the world where a woman's life expectancy, 53 years, is lower than a man's. Hardly surprising when it appears that women do all the work. Indira and I set off to find Min Min Lama's family a seven-hour journey, five of it on foot, to learn more about the people she had spoken of so bitterly. I never want to see my stepmother again, she'd said, nor my home and not even my father. 
On the way, I realized that Min Min Lama, albeit a victim of rape and family jealousy, had got off lightly. Stop at any rural hospital in Nepal and you find the survivors of illegal abortions. Some walk for days and collapse, bleeding on the hospital floor with torn uteruses, only to die later of septicemia. Nepal has one of the highest maternity mortality rates in the world. More than half the deaths are due to botched abortions. The women will say they've suffered spontaneous miscarriages and doctors will try and patch them up before the police get involved. <laughs> Leading surgeons like Dr. Bahara Jil are in the forefront of the campaign to legalize abortion. He says he spends too much time and risks arrest himself fighting to save the lives of such women. Almost all the abortions are done by the untrained person with uh, very limited equipments or no equipments at all. Sometimes we have, found, we have found, you know, some sticks, chilies inside, some bamboos, what not, everything, whatever possible, even tobacco sticks. And perforating the uterus, not only once or twice, in five, six places at a time, on top of that, five, six perforations in the intestine. So we deal that perforations the whole night we spend and save one life. That is the thing what I wanted to make clear to the government and all the learned people of this society. Someone at the hospital told us where we would find the local Sudini on our route, the Nepali traditional birth attendants. They perform midwifery duties in the country and in this village, I was told, illegal abortions. We found one of them working in the field. Is it true, we ask, that abortion is part of your trade? <laughs> no, she says. I only deal in live births. Another Sudini lived in the most prosperous house in the village. She agreed to talk on two conditions that I understood that no illegal abortions took place in her village and that she herself had retired. They were preparing lunch when we finally arrived at Min Min Lama's house. No one looked too pleased to see us. None of Min Min Lama's full brothers and sisters were there. She told us that her father's new family had banished the children from the first marriage, anxious that none of them should claim from the share of the inheritance. Min Min Lama's stepmother, though, denied abandoning her. <laughs> the father too said he hadn't visited her. Oh, she too. I know this is our girl. I go to India. Chuli, which is Aligo de Lago, the end of the Tobele, Maya Laudena. 
अब कुन जेल में से कुन उस में से कुन ऐसे बने मले पाता दिए गए सहरा नीचे को there is only one woman's jail in Kathmandu, and of course he could have found his daughter. And so it was our fault that we believed him when he showed us the path. An hour's walk along this way, he said, and we'd find the sister-in-law to talk to. Two hours later, and we still hadn't found her. One villager said she'd gone that way. Another told us that she'd left the valley altogether. A third pointed us in an opposite direction. It was clear that the entire village was part of the conspiracy to cover up what had happened to Min Min Lama. When night fell, locals warned us to leave the area. There were bandits and murderers around, we were told. But with the father thinking we were by now safely lost, we returned to Min Min Lama's house. By now, it came as no surprise to find the sister-in-law was there. The parents, now embarrassed by being found lying, shouted at her that she had to talk to us. We asked her whether she had given Min Min Lama poison when she'd had that toothache. A neighbor intervened. We said to the sister-in-law that a 16-year-old girl is going to be in jail now for 12 years. Did she feel bad about that? News of the night's events got around, and with it the belief that there was something wrong about Min Min Lama's imprisonment and that the case should be reopened. By now, the authorities were alerted to the attention we were paying to Nepal's youngest woman prisoner. On our last visit to Min Min Lama, Indira was able to tell her that the court was reviewing her case and her 12-year sentence might be reduced. Thank you. I'm very happy, she said. Indira was right. After we left Nepal, the courts ruled that Min Min Lama is innocent, and she has since been released. Nearly a 100 women in Nepal charged with a similar crime are still behind bars. Let's <laughs> go.